I will call the remote hearing of the Environment and Natural Resources Conference Committee to order. Today is May 22nd, 2022. This meeting is held in accordance with Rule 10.01, which was passed and allows for remote hearings. All remote hearings are recorded and live streamed by House Public Information. The clerk will take attendance by roll. Representative Hansen is present. Representative Wozlowick. Wozlowick present. Representative Green, you have seconds. We have to hang up. You don't have Morrison. Morrison present. Representative <laughs> Lippert. Lippert present. Representative Heinzman. Heinzman present. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Ingebrigtsen present. Senator Tomasoni. Tomasoni present. Senator Eichhorn. Eichhorn present. Senator Weber. Weber present. Senator Eakin. Eakin present. All members are present. The quorum is present. Senator Ingebrigtsen, would you like to move adoption of the spreadsheet? Um, I would be happy to do that. Um, um, I'll, I'll make a motion. However, I want to make sure that everybody has at least a little bit of time to look at it. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, uh, but at this time, yes, I will move the uh, the spreadsheet. And Senator Ingebrigtsen, was there a uh, correction, a technical correction on the fish, fish hatcheries and the public waters that the funds that they were assigned to? Yes, uh, uh, and I think maybe uh, Mr. Hagemeyer can, can uh, clear that up. I did talk with uh, Mr. Mueller with regards to the flip-flop of the uh, uh, heritage and general funding when it came to fish hatchery and, and public access. Is this Mr. Hagemiller? Uh, Mr. Chair and Mr. Chair, I, I wasn't aware of that, but we can certainly take care of that for you. <laughs> one of them yeah. is general fund currently, and one of them was heritage enhancement. It's currently the public water access site or fish hatchery improvements are out of the general fund. And public water access sites out of the heritage enhancement account in the game and fish fund if you'd like those they're both for a million dollars each so if you'd like them switch the funding sources we can take care of that yes yes that would that would be my my uh, motion to my my oral to my motion uh, and it's been agreed upon by uh, by myself uh, and i did have our staff do uh, agree to that as well and uh, i know the agency is uh, agree with it as well it has nothing to do with the bottom line. It doesn't change that at all. Senator Ingridson moves that amendment. Uh, we can do that as an oral amendment to make that technical correction. Uh, Senator Ingridson moves. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Uh, technical correction is made. Uh, Senator Ingridson, should we have? Uh, Mr. Hagemeyer, uh, do a walkthrough. Please. Mr. Chair, I will go through the spreadsheet. I'm not going to put it up on the screen just for my ease to go through it personally. Um, but it's the spreadsheet that was posted on the bottom corner. It's time stamped 5-22-2022 at 4-26 p.m. The top says Environment and Natural Resources Finance, seventh file 4062 Conference Committee Agreement. You'll see the last two sets of columns are the current biennium and then the tails biennium. And I'll just read the appropriations that are included in this agreement. On line 11 is a St. Louis River Mercury TMDL extension. This is a past appropriation that's just being extended and that's how we show it on the tracking. Line 29 is the Red River Basin Phosphorus Management uh, Program. There's a grant for $250,000. And those are the two general fund pieces at the Pollution Control Agency totaling $3 million. Further down on that page, you'll see the environmental fund changes. On line 48 is the additional score grants for $700,000 per year ongoing. On line 50 is an air permit study for $125,000. On line 52 is a petroleum tank release cleanup report for $50,000. And on line 54 is the air monitoring equipment. This is a reduced amount for two pieces of equipment for $360,000. And that's it for the environmental fund changes, it's $1.235 million. 
starting on line 58 is the remediation fund. The two changes of the remediation fund are the railroad safety for 133,000 per year. And there's a one-time appropriation of 1.5 million on line 61 for Lake of the Woods County Williams School cleanup. On line 65, you'll see a statutory program. It's a creation of an account for the agency to run the brownfield program. It's $90,000 out of the special revenue fund. In total, the Pollution Control Agency has direct appropriations of $3,168,000 90, and then 90,000 of statutory appropriations. Going down to line 73, you'll see the changes in revenue. The 3M reporting changes uh, have a savings of $1,000. On lines 74 and 75 are the revenue changes needed for that creation of the new account for the Brownfield program. On lines 77 and 78, you'll see a transfer from the environmental fund to the remediation fund. There's typically a transfer of 22 million per year. Um, this uh, going into that fund to support it, this just helps uh, balance the bottom line by add, adding an additional 3 million. And then on line 79, you'll see the St. Louis River revenue for that extension that I mentioned earlier. Starting on line 82 is the Department of Natural Resources. On line uh, 86 is the pitch hatchery improvements on the tracking sheet that shows general fund right now for a million dollars, but we will make the correction with the technical to make that heritage enhancement account in the game and fish fund and switch the other one to the general fund. On line 102 is uh, AIS grants for $500,000 per year. On line 109 is an RFP for RT Quick for $250,000 one time. On line 111 is the No Child Left Inside grant program for $600,000 per year. On line 112 is the general fund appropriation for the Minnesota Law Enforcement Association deficiency request for $269,000 for the biennium. It's a one-time appropriation. On line 113 is the Canisteo Mine Pit infra Infrastructure O&M for $850,000 one time. In total for fiscal years 22 and 23, the general fund to the Department of Natural Resources is $3,469,000 and the tails is $2,200,000. Starting on line 118 is the Heritage Enhancement Account in the Game and Fish Fund. On line 118 is a sports shooting sports facility grant for $150,000 one time. On line 121 is the Non-Game Wildlife Program for $70,000 per year. On line 122 is elk reintroduction for $500,000 one time. On line 123 is $750,000 one time for ash tree replacement grants. And additionally on 124, the school tree planting grants are included for $250,000. And then on line 126, there's a million dollars for public water access sites out of the heritage enhancement account, but this is the technical amendment switch that you had mentioned, we will make that. In total, the uh, appropriation for the, out of the Game and Fish Fund is $2,720,000. Starting on line 130 is the Natural Resources Fund. The Voyager Country ATV Trail System has $500,000 one time. The Prospector Trail System is included for $500,000 one time. The Roseau ATV Trail Resurfacing is included for $447,000 one time. The an ORV Trail Ambassador Grant uh, is included out of the Offered vehicle account for $40,000 per year. The zoo lottery and loo increase, the, there's three zoos, the two for the Como Zoo and Duluth, the Duluth Zoo go through the DNR. So they're increased $150,000. And then on line 135, you'll see the local trail grants increase out of the lottery and loo account for $250,000 per year. And on line 136, the state parks and trails lottery and loo account account is increased by $800,000 per year. In total, the appropriations for the Department of Natural Resources are $8,848,000. Starting on line 141 are the appropriation changes, the first or revenue changes. The first one you'll see is the revenues related on line 142 are the revenues related to the lands bill of 1.6 million. And then starting on line 143, there's a change in the lottery and lieu allocation change. Right now it's 72.43% that gets allocated to the five lottery and lieu accounts. The bill changes it to 76% between those five accounts and adds the 1% for tourism account. So you'll see the revenues between the five accounts is 1.678 million. And then the additional 1% is 470,000. 
And then below that on lines 145, 146, 147, 148, and 149, and 150 are the deposits into the correct accounts. Um, on line 153, you'll see the water bill extension of an appropriation that's included and doesn't carry a cost for that. And that's it for the DNR. Going to the border, water, and soil resources. Uh, the first appropriation you'll see is on line 159, the support for a tribal liaison included at 125,000 the first year and then slightly larger amounts in the tails. And on line 164, the local road wetland, wetland uh, wetland replacement program is included at 1580000 the first year and then 765000 per year ongoing. The total appropriations to the Board of Water and Soil Resources are $1.705 million out of the Cayman Fish Fund and then $894,000 per year ongoing. Uh, and there's no changes for the Conservation Corps. The only change for the Metropolitan Council Parks is on line 181. It's the Metro Parks and Trails Lottery in Lieu account. And that's increased by $800,000 per year. There are no changes at the Minnesota Zoo. There are no changes at the Science Museum. Under Explore Minnesota Tourism, on line 199, the large scale events promotion is included at $1 million one time. And then on line 200, uh, there's $552,000 for tourism grants. And then on line 204, our large scale events promotion out of the new. Uh, dedicated account, and that's $450,000 per year. In total, the Explore Minnesota Tourism has appropriated $2,002,000. There are no changes or the creation of the Minnesota Outdoor Recreation Office did not happen. There's no appropriations to the University of Minnesota. And then you'll see on the last page, on line 217 is the repayment of NELCAT. Uh, there's $876,000 the first year, and then $765,000 per year ongoing. In total, the bill appropriates uh, $7,902,000. There's the offsetting revenue of $50,000 and then the lost general fund revenue for the lottery in lieu increase of $2.1 million to hit the $10 million tar target listed on line 224. And that is my quick attempt at a walkthrough of the spreadsheet, Mr. Chair. I can answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, Mr. Hagermeyer. And I wanna thank uh, House and Senate staff for their extensive work and late hours on uh, working on this. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, Senator Ingebrigtsen, any Mr. comments? Chair, Mr. Chair, I don't know if there's any questions, but yeah, there, there's uh, been a tremendous amount of work, as you well know, uh, that goes into this. And, and over the last day, uh, it's been tirelessly between, uh, between uh, us and, uh, uh, and your staff uh, to come up with a, uh, what we think is a reasonable bill here. Uh, and a lot of concessions. I mean, uh, uh, the house started out with a pretty big target and we had a small target and uh, it was reduced down to 10 million and uh, we were able to, uh, to come up with, uh, we think is a pretty good, pretty good budget here. So uh, I don't know if there's any questions from anybody, but I just want to say a big thank you for the, uh, for the staff and, and uh, all the work that both the, uh, the chair and the other members, uh, I know it doesn't seem like you were able to participate, but we tried to keep you as informed as well as we did. As, as well as we could with all of everything else going on. So thanks much. Senator Ingebrigtsen, I think uh, Representative Heinzman has a question. Representative Heinzman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have a question. It's on line 61. I don't remember hearing anything on the Lake of the Woods County Williams School cleanup. And I was just hoping to get a little bit of uh, an idea what that is. And if uh, we could get some detail, that'd be great. Uh, that was a Senate provision, uh, Senator Ingebrigtsen. Uh, yes, that was a uh, an unkey provision. Uh, um, possibly, I can let uh, Mr. Stanley uh, describe it instead of me babbling. I'll let him take a take a stab at that because he's uh, very intimately in, involved in all the policies. So, Mr. Stanley. Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chair, thank you, Mr. Chair, members. Good evening. I'm Ben Stanley on Senate staff. The uh, thing that Representative Heinzman is asking about is in Article One, and it is an appropriation to deal with a vacant school building in that county. Representative Heinzman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, uh, I think I'm getting the fact that it was a school cleanup. Um, I'm wondering, was there any special circumstances there that necessitated uh, uh, 
dollars spent. I'm sure there is. I just was hoping for a little bit of detail. If we don't have that, it's something that maybe we could get um, at a, a later a later time today. But if there is more, that'd be helpful. We will uh, try to get you more information. Uh, I will. Representative Heisman. Um, and members, what, what the motion was, was uh, amended uh, with that technical correction is to adopt the spreadsheet. Uh, there is rider language uh, that has been worked on uh, that references a number of these appropriations as well. And so uh, the kind of the process here is we would uh, direct nonpartisan staff to work with a reviser to draft the conference committee report uh, and then that would be posted for review. So we would recess uh, and we have a midnight deadline as everyone knows. Um, the, uh, the conference committee uh, uh, had indicated earlier that we would not be taking any testimony. Uh, the conference committee has posted uh, a letter from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency uh, regarding uh, the lack of operating funds in the agreement. I don't know. Um, Mr. Uh, Senator Ingebrigtsen, if you want to just address that. Uh, no, in fact, um, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. The, uh, that was the real sticking point, at least with our, with our caucus, was the operating uh, uh, being a non-budget year. So uh, when that was finally, uh, I guess, decided upon by, uh, by, by yourself, as well as I, I think the administration, uh, that's when we were able to start uh, uh, spending more time on the bill this morning. and. Uh, as a result of that, we're again. We th I think we got a pretty good bill here. So, but that was the real sticking point, and and uh, in fact, that I think the whole bill had stalled completely for that, and uh, and uh, that's something that has going to be dealt with during a budget year. So, well, just to clarify, Senator Ingebrigtsen, that was a uh, involvement by leadership. Uh, uh, yep. That was not a solo decision. No, no, that's right. I that's my fault in saying that. In fact, I responded back to the commissioner that. It was a leadership uh, re leadership position uh, on via the email. So, um, any other questions? I'd like the staff to get working uh, so we can get this completed before the deadline. Uh, Senator Ingebrigtsen renews his motion as amended to adopt the spreadsheet. Kirk will take the roll. Representative Hansen. Aye. Representative Wozniak. Waslowick, aye. Represent Morrison. Morrison, aye. Represent Lippert. Lippert, aye. Represent Heitzman. Heitzman, aye. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Ingebrigtsen, aye. Senator Tomasoni. Tomasoni votes aye. Senator Eichhorn. Eichhorn votes aye. Senator Weber. Weber votes aye. Senator Egan. Egan votes aye. There being five votes from the House and five votes from the Senate. The motion is adopted and prevails. Senator Ingebrigtsen, do you move to direct the nonpartisan staff to work with the revisor to draft a conference committee report for adoption and direct nonpartisan staff to make any technical corrections to conform with the action and intent of the committee? I do, I move, so moved. Members, are there any questions or corrections on that? We will work. Uh, Senator Ingebrigtsen and I will work to make sure that uh, we have that accurate intent into the uh, language there. All, uh, well, the clerk will take the roll. Representative Hansen. Aye. Representative Waslick. Waslick, aye. Representative Morrison. Morrison, aye. Representative Lippert. Lippert, aye. Representative Heinzman. Thanks. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Ingebrigtsen, aye. Senator Tomasoni. Tomasoni, aye. Senator Eichhorn. Eichhorn, aye. Senator Weber. Weber, aye. Senator Egan. Egan, aye. There being five votes in favor from the House and five votes in favor from the Senate. Motion is adopted. Thank you, members. Uh, we are in recess uh, until we receive the conference committee report. Thank you for your uh, participation and patience. Thank you all.